All right, guys, we're here with analyzing how science texts are organized. So you have a science text here about can animals predict the weather? Remember, as you are reading, you're clicking on the microphone every time to read it aloud to you, but I'm also going to read it as we go. Can animals predict the weather? It's a beautiful sunny day, and yet your dog Fido is going crazy. He was barking, whining, and hiding behind the couch. Does Fido think that you're about to give him a bath? Maybe, but it's also possible that Fido's peculiar behavior can mean a storm is on the way. The effect of air pressure on animals and humans. Animals, unlike humans, are very sensitive to changes in air pressure, the force that the air has on an object. Typically, humans don't feel air pressure as intensely as animals do. The weight of the air isn't heavy enough for the human body to detect. However, we can feel air pressure in an airplane. As the plane goes up, the air pressure plummets. This quick drop in pressure often makes our ears pop. Animals, on the other hand, can feel these changes without taking a plane ride. When a large storm is approaching, the air pressure drops very quickly. This is likely what animals react to with odd behavior. Animal behavior in storms. To understand animal behavior and the weather, it's helpful to understand the relationship between air pressure and storms. First, an area of low pressure forms, which, ha which has air that is warmer than the air around it. The warm air then rises into the sky and clouds begin to form. Afterward, you might see rain, snow, or lightning coming from these clouds. Sometimes high winds form in these low pressure areas too. When this happens, a storm is born. The decrease in air pressure that can cause big storms can also cause extreme behavior in animals. As a result of a coming storm, birds have been observed flying low to the ground at high speeds. Scientists have recorded sharks swimming into deeper waters too. A sudden drop in pressure may be why animals like Fido seek out a warm, safe place to hide. Animals can help. Is animal behavior a foolproof way to predict the weather? No. Scientific studies have yet to prove that animal behavior reliably signals coming storms. So check your weather forecast first. See if there are any storm warnings in your area. If a storm's on the way, make sure you take the proper precautions and get to a safe place. In the absence of a weather forecast though, observing our animals has its usefulness. The animals around us may be telling us something important and helping us to stay safe. Click next to our first question. I think it's gonna go back to them talking for a second. All right, click next to our first question here. Which paragraph mostly follows the compare and contrast text structure? So where they're comparing and contrasting, right? Two different things. Let's look at paragraph two. Here, it looks like we're comparing animals, right? And how they're reacting to air pressure to how humans react to air pressure. So that does have a good compare and contrast text structure. I'm also gonna look at three though. This one I see first, then afterward. To me, that one has more of a sequential structure. Or the decrease in pressure can cause big storms as a result. That looks like cause and effect to me. And for five, is it a foolproof way to predict the weather? So I don't exactly see a compare and contrast text structure there. The best one being number two, where they're comparing how animals react to pressure to how humans react to pressure. The way those are similar and different. Click next. What kind of text structure does the author mostly use in paragraph three to explain the relationship between air pressure and storms? Well, we kind of talked about this when we were looking at the last question. So looking at paragraph three again, I noticed some signal words, right? First, then, afterwards. These words signal that there's something going in order, right? We're going in a sequence. So the best option would be sequential order. First, second, third, first, then last. What kind of text structure does the author mostly use in paragraph four to describe animals' behavior before big storms? So let's go back to paragraph four. Keep going. All right, the decrease in air pressure can cause, mm, interesting keyword there, as a result, so that would be the effect of that cause, right? And then scientists have recorded them doing this as well. So that's another effect. So those keywords signal to me that because of decreased air pressure, these effects or these things are happening. So 
So the best answer would be cause and effect. What kind of text structure does the author mostly use in paragraph five to discuss animals and weather prediction? So going back to paragraph five about animals being able to help, right? We have this problem that animals helping us predict weather isn't totally foolproof, right? And then they say to solve that, that you could check the weather forecast, right? So checking it to verify. We don't have sequential order here. I definitely don't see those key words first then. We don't have a cause and an effect, not because of this, this is happening. And we're not comparing and contrasting two different things. The best answer for this would be the problem of is animal behavior foolproof, the solution. Since it's not, we're gonna go ahead and check the weather too. Click next. In paragraph two, why does the author compare and contrast how humans and animals react to changes in air pressure? Does it show that humans have problems accurately predicting the weather? To explain how much more sensitive humans are to the changes, definitely not. Remember, it said dogs are more sensitive or animals. To explain how animals react towards humans when air pressure changes, so how they're like behaving towards us, or to show that they can sense changes in air pressure that humans can't. Remember here I said that we might sense changes when we're like in an airplane, but animals can sense those changes even earlier, right? They're more sensitive to those. So the best answer would be that they can sense changes that we can't. I might notice air pressure changes on an airplane, but I wouldn't notice them just in the weather. Click next. Which of these is not a possible effect of dropping air pressure? Birds fly higher in the sky at higher speed. So let's look back where they mentioned the birds. Here it says, where did it go? Down here. Birds have been observed flying low to the ground. Well, this is higher in the sky, so that's not true. But I'm gonna read the other one. Big storms form. We know that happens because of air pressure change. Animals do seek warm, safe places. In sharks, it says do swim into deeper water. So they have this one mixed up. It actually goes lower in the sky, not higher. Click next. Which signal words help you figure out the text structure of paragraph three? Well, we kind of talked about this already, right? Because this was our sequential order one. We see those words first, then, and afterward, right? That let us know that that was sequential order. Click next. Why does the author use problem solution text structure in paragraph five? Is it trying to show us what happens if we only rely on animal behavior? Is it to provide a better alternative to predicting the weather than observing animal behavior? To explain what steps to take to prepare for a big storm? Or to show the difference between using weather forecasts and animal behavior to prepare for storms? Well, remember, we have a problem here and the animal can't always tell us exactly what's gonna happen. So he's giving us a solution or another alternative to predict the weather, right? He's giving us another option. So a better alternative to predicting the weather, right, is a way to solve that by using the weather forecast. He gave us a solution or an alternative. We're down to two more questions. Which words and phrases signal that paragraph two most likely uses a compare contrast? So, Remember, we're comparing and contrasting animals and humans. So it says animals, unlike, well, we got that there, unlike humans. And it also says down here, remember, however, and it says, well, on the other hand, this is happening. So that compare and contrast, unlike, right? So that's kind of the opposite. That's the contrast. And on the other hand, right, they're contrasting again. So unlike and on the other hand are signal words for compare and contrast showing the differences between animals and humans and how they react to the changes. Why is the sequential order text structure paragraph three important to this article? So again, go down to paragraph three to remind us here. This is when it goes through how these storms actually form. Does it help readers understand the difference between low pressure and high pressure air? Does it help readers understand the chain of events that lead up to a storm? So does it give us each kind of piece that leads up to it. First this happens, then this happens, then this happens, and then we have a storm. Does it help us understand how a storm can result in animal behavior changes? Well, no, this is just talking about how these storms form, not the actual changes of the animals. 
or does it help us understand why there's lightning in a storm? I'm mentioning that you could see lightning in the storm, but not really telling us why. The best answer is that it tells us what happens leading up to a storm, right? Those chain of events. First this happens, then this happens, then this, then you get a storm. That would be your best choice. Click next. All right, and then we're all done with this one. If you have any other questions, please reach out to your classroom teachers or resource teachers. We're here for whatever you need. Have a great week seven, and I will see you later.